Hey, welcome everyone back to the channel. I'm Carlos and in this video we're going to be taking a look at OBS. If you notice down here in the middle, bottom part of OBS, I'm speaking into a microphone and that mic auxiliary level thing is not working. I was having issues with that and I was doing research trying to figure it out and I saw that there was a lot of people on the message boards on the OBS website we're having a lot of the same issues. So I hope this is the same thing that you guys are going through and I hope that this video helps you guys. I wanted to take a couple minutes to take a look at my setup for those of you that might wanna start streaming. So then that way, hopefully this is a really good tutorial for you guys to follow that will, you know, save you some time. Everything that we talk about in this video, we're gonna have links in the description of this video. Not just that, but we're also going to have chapter marks. So if you are one of those people on the OBS message board and you just can't quite get OBS to work properly, you can go ahead and take a look at the chapters in the description of this video and you can jump right to the solution. Hopefully it's the same one. It took me a minute to figure out how to fix it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it so we can check out this setup. First things first, go to OBS website and we see here OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. Here we see that OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software and it's open source. So most of the time open source means that it's free. So we see here that they have a build for Windows, Macintosh and Linux. Go ahead and grab the Macintosh version. And when that downloads, you'll see that this is what you get. And all you have to do is grab this OBS application file and drag it into this folder here. But that's how simple it is to install OBS. Now that we have OBS installed, let's go grab Loopback. Now what Loopback does is it takes multiple sources of audio. So what that means is anything that makes audio, whether it's a microphone, whether it's a website, anything like that, you can take all of those, combine them into one audio source, and then you use that as your audio source in OBS. And this just makes it easier for you to be able to manage your different audio sources that is getting pumped into OBS. Now the thing about Loopback is it's not open source, so it's not free. They do have a free version, but if we go to the bottom, we see down here, Loopback free, while using the software in trial mode, limitations are applied. And if we click purchase, we see that loopback is $99. It's not bad for what it does. I'm telling you, having to set up multiple audio devices and then being able to turn them off and on at any given time, it's, it's worth it. And uh, I paid $99, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I'm still getting free updates and everything. So for me, I think this is well worth the price. It saves you so much time and so many headaches. Here's the interface for Loopback. Super simple. On the left, we have all of our virtual devices. On the right is the breakdown for each of those devices. Here we have live stream audio. That's the one that I generally use. So here I have Safari, I have my podcaster mic, and I have Google Chrome. You might be asking, why do we have Safari and Google Chrome in there? Let's say that you're trying to start a reaction channel. Well, you're gonna want that audio from that YouTube video or whatever it is that you're reacting to. You want that audio and you want that video at the same time. And most of the time, like if I'm doing anything on YouTube, since YouTube and Google are the same thing, I try to use Google for those videos. But Safari is on there because when I'm doing live streams, like art live streams and stuff, what I like to do is have music playing and I get all my music from Epidemic Sound. None of this stuff is sponsored, by the way. I'm, I guess I'm supposed to say that. None of this stuff is sponsored. If there's any money to be transacted, I made those transactions. I paid $100 and I pay my membership for Epidemic Sound. There's gonna be a link in the description of this video for Epidemic Sound where you get a little bit of a deal and I get a little bit of a kickback if you guys decide to join. Anyway, I love Epidemic Sound. I paid for them. I've been paying for them for a few years now. So go ahead and check them out. Here's Epidemic Sound. If I click on music to play, you see how Safari is giving us the, the levels. So now that we know that that's working, we're good to go. And again, if we look at these lines, we see that the left and right channel for all of these 
are going into output channels and that output is going to a monitor. So if I had headphones, I can plug them into my Rode Podcaster and then I can listen to whatever's happening. But as far as OBS is concerned, this live stream audio, that's what's gonna show up and that's what we're gonna select. For kicks, let's go ahead and start a new virtual device. We can actually come here and let's name this test audio source. And then we can click down here in sources and you see all of the different things that we can add. There's my web camera has a microphone built in. You can add the different microphones. You can add different audio creating softwares and stuff like that. So if I click here and say Rode Podcaster, you see the levels are starting to move. If I click again, I've never done text-to-speech, but that'd be fun to play with just to see. Anyway, and you see that all of these things are feeding into the output channel. You don't necessarily need a monitor. You can actually monitor things through OBS. And if you don't know what a monitor is, it's just basically something that lets you listen to the sound while it's happening. And if anything is wrong, you can go back and, and change things, right? Now, the powerful thing about this is I'm going to click here and delete that. Let's say maybe I don't want to use Google Chrome this time that I'm recording. I can turn it off. Let's say that I don't want to use live stream audio right now. I can turn that off. And then you see that this device is being currently used, la la la. So you're gonna get some of those error messages or, or alerts when something is using that audio source. But if OBS was closed, we wouldn't get that alert. And just for me, like whenever I'm done streaming or whatever, I turn this stuff off. So it's just not in the way. If you have a bunch of different ones and they're all turned on, your audio sources is gonna look crazy. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's turn Google Chrome back on. We have our Rode Podcaster is showing us perfectly. All right, cool. So now we can actually minimize this and get this out of the way. Okay, here we are in OBS. If you look on the bottom left, you see all of my scenes set up. So what I have is a screen that's ready for when I'm getting everything prepared and I'm about to go live. It says about to do this. Then my main scene, I can use my A7S III as a web camera by using Imaging Edge. We can talk about that later, that's for a different video. Just in case I have to have a potty break or something, be right back. This is the webcam here, and you see how you can set this up to have a different angle. I have my Cintiq set up here, and the reason why you're getting this whole vortex thing is because it's showing the same thing on top of itself, and so it just, you know, it goes into vortex mode. Here we go, the vortex mode with the little camera at the bottom. And then iPad, I have it set up to where if I have my iPad connected, um, I'm able to stream whatever's happening on my iPad to my computer and then that goes into OBS. Again, for a different video, I don't want this video to be too long. So the way that you can set up scenes, you see down here at the bottom left, you can click plus to create a new scene. Let's do a test scene. And in here, I can click plus. Maybe I want to do a video capture device. Add existing Logitech camera, click OK. And here we can resize it. And it's just that easy to set up a scene. Now let's say that we wanted to do overlays and stuff. When you're doing overlays, you need a transparent background. My favorite file type when dealing with transparencies and stuff is PNG, but you can also do GIFs. And yes, it's GIFs. That's a G, not a J. JPEG, GIF. Let's get it together. But yeah, let's say that we wanted to do an overlay. I can click plus over here and do an image. I'm gonna add existing lower thirds overlay and click, and there you see, and those are all existing. If I wanted to do a new one, I can double click and here you can see where you can browse for your different graphics. But the cool thing that OBS does is if you use one graphic, as long as you created it and you're using it somewhere else, it will show up as we saw there as an existing image. So I've already added this lower thirds overlay and so I can reuse it on the different scenes. I'm speaking into this microphone, 
but we don't see the levels moving here in mic and auxiliary. When you go to do research, everyone is gonna tell you to come over here, go into settings, and then go into audio, and then we see here disabled, disabled, live stream audio, and that's where you remember how we set this up in loopback? This is where it's gonna show up. You can either disable this channel or you can do default, blah, 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 blah. We don't need any of these except for live stream audio. When I click OK, we see that the levels still are not moving. This is the part where you guys and the message boards are looking for. What I'm going to do is go up to the Apple, go to System Preferences. Then I'm going to go to Security and Privacy. Okay, now I'm going to go down to microphone, scroll down, and what I'm going to do is look for OBS. Let's click on that. It's going to ask you to quit and reopen, so let's do that. And here we are, and look at the levels. Just as simple. It took me, I don't know how long to figure that one out, but hopefully for you guys in the message boards and for you guys that are trying to set things up, Hopefully that's gonna save you at least two weeks of research. <laughs> okay, so now that we have all of our scenes set up, I wanted to show you one last thing that I use when streaming. I actually use this for Premiere and Adobe Animate as well, but I wanted to show you guys. The Elgato Stream Deck gives me 15 buttons that I can configure to do different things. And let me show you how to do that. Stream Deck comes with this software. I can click here and click on Configure Stream Deck. And I have this OBS button. And if we look here, it says five actions. If I click that button, five actions are going to take place. We're gonna switch profile. So what that means is when I tap this button, the buttons are gonna change. Okay, so we're gonna switch profile. and We're gonna go into the OBS profile. We're gonna open up a website. And this is the live stream dashboard on YouTube. So there's a couple reasons why you would want to do that. First is, if anything goes wrong with your live stream feed, this will give you immediate feedback so you can fix it as soon as possible. And secondly, the chat that's happening in that video, while that video is live streaming, that chat is there too. So you have all of the information that you need that's associated to that live stream. So I open that page up. The second page is Epidemic Sound. Again, if you want a trial, go ahead and click the link that's in the description of this video. I'm gonna open up Loopback, obviously, because we're using Loopback, and then we're gonna open up OBS. And it's really simple to set up this multi-action. All I have to do is come over to the right-hand side. Let's say I wanted to switch profile, like this one here. I'm gonna switch profile and just click and drag it over. And the way things are stacked in this panel here, that's the order of operations that it's gonna happen. We're gonna have switch profile, then the website, then blah, 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 blah. If we wanted to open up a website, we can click there and we see here, here's a URL. Uh, opening up different softwares, we can click open. Now let's take a look at how I have my OBS buttons set up. So I can click here and click OBS. And these are the different scenes. So to add a scene changer here, what we're gonna do is come over to the scene under OBS Studio. I can click on that and drag that over. And now if we click on scene, you see here the list of all of these scenes are the same as what we have set up here in OBS. And then I'm able to click on whichever scene I want. And now if I take the Stream Deck and tap on all of the different scenes, we see that it switches. We can also go back to configure the Stream Deck and grab the record button and drop that in there. Because one of the neat things that OBS does is you can record your video and then edit it and then post it later. You don't have to go live with OBS. But if we did wanna go live, we're gonna hit stream. Another thing that you can do within this configuration, if I take this, right click, copy, I can come down here and paste. And now I can come here and adjust that too. That's how I did all of the different scenes. So now if we went to OBS and click on settings, then go to stream, this is where you enter the information for your YouTube stream or Twitch or whatever. They have Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, Restream for another video, and Twitter. 
Obviously, I'm going to leave it on YouTube. If you remember the URL that we got for the YouTube studio, the streaming information. So this is what it looks like. You can go in here and edit all of this stuff. But this stream key is the important one. You're going to click copy and then you're going to enter that into this section here. I'm not going to show it and you shouldn't either because there's a security thing. If someone gets that stream key, they can stream to your channel. So you want to keep that secret, even though you can come here and reset your stream key, but you might as well just leave it like that and keep it hidden. And as a test, what I'm going to do is come here and click edit. I want to change the visibility to private because I, this is a test. I don't want you guys to see this test or you guys don't need to see this test. I'm going to click save. Okay. Everything is cool. So let's go to OBS and I'm going to hit stream and that should have started. You see here on the bottom, right? It says stop streaming. That's because we started streaming and we come here and there is our stream is starting to show up. So now if I switch to about to go live any minute now, and there's a delay, usually it's about 10 seconds or so, and there it is. And that's how I set up my OBS. We were able to take all of our audio sources from loopback, feed those into OBS, and then from OBS, we sent all of that information over to YouTube so we can go live. We were even able to troubleshoot some of the audio issues that we were having with like basically just giving permissions for OBS to use our audio. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone else that's looking to get into filmmaking, animation, graphic design, send this video on over to them. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And if you notice right next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell. If you click that bell, every time I come out with a new video, you'll be alerted. And with that, I hope this video finds you healthy and I hope this video finds you safe. I'll see you in the next video.